Amen. I want to use uh, this morning uh, Genesis, a scripture from Genesis, and uh, as a, a, a launching point for a message that I've entitled The Superpower of the S Word. Everybody say, The Superpower of the S Word. Now, now, you know, in the world, the S word is not a good word. So I'm not talking about the, the world's S word. I'm talking about God's S word. Amen. And here in Genesis uh, chapter 2, I want to, to share with you verses 16 and 17. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. Here God had made man in his own image and in his own likeness. And... Uh, by, by making man in his own image and likeness, he, he also, when he took the rib from the man and fashioned the, God's greatest creation, woman, ultimately, he had made them both in his own image and likeness and gave them dominion. And God implemented the most powerful word in the kingdom in this declaration. In giving mankind dominion, giving mankind a position of authority and power over the earth, God was ultimately replicating himself in us and giving us that opportunity. And the one thing that God required was submission. Everybody say submission. submission. Oh, say submission. submission. Say the superpower... Of the word, of the word. Submission. submission. The only thing that God was requiring in order to exist in a super powerful position of authority and dominion, just like God, was submission to him. He had given Adam and his wife the, the, the garden and everything, and he says, the only thing that I am requiring of you is that you be obedient to me, that you trust me, and that you love me enough to not eat of one tree. Of one tree. The only thing that man had to do was to love God more than the desire to find out what that one tree was all about. That's all he had to do. Submit to God and say, okay, God, I will exist in submission to you and I don't have to have a knowledge of what that tree is all about. The word submission is the act of yielding to power or authority. It is the, the act of surrender of the person and power to the control are governing of another. God required that we, as his creation, trust him, love him, and be obedient to him and being willing to submit to him. Now, whenever, Raphael, whenever you want to put, put do, do you need to hold my hand right here? Here, put that microphone in that hand. So, just, just, just squeeze my hand whenever you want. When, 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 you, when you want, that's our signal here. Just squeeze my hand right here. Turn, go with me over in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Submission. The supernatural power of the word submission. See, see, the, isn't it interesting that the enemy has done everything that he possibly can to make the word submission a bad word, a dirty word, a word of, of, of 
lack of empowerment, a, a word that makes you subservient, that makes you feel like they're, you know, that you're less than some. And yet, it is the word that indicates the very power of God when we submit unto him. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, look what the word of God says. Be ye therefore followers of God. Everybody say followers of God. As dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Here we see the submission of the Son of God to humbling himself. The scripture tells us over in Philippians, though he was equal to God, he didn't think it robbery to submit to the plan, the purpose, and the will of God to redeem us and become as a normal human being, God to disrobe himself of his deity and to become an ordinary human being and submit to the plan and purpose of the cross in order to redeem whosoever from eternal damnation. The plan of God was a plan of submission unto death, even the death of the cross. So we see the power, the only power that could redeem a human soul, the only payment that could be made for you and I so that we could be delivered out of eternal damnation into everlasting life was an act of unselfish submission. Submission, the act of yielding to power or authority, surrendering the person and power to control or govern oneself. Here in Ephesians, and here's where we, we want to land today, here in Ephesians, the, the Apostle Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, begins to outline how we are to live our lives as individuals, everybody say as an individual, as, an individual. as, a, couple in marriage, as a couple in marriage, as a family. As a family. There is always a role of submission that we are to operate in if we want the supernatural power of God in our life. If we want God's best, we have to operate under the submission to the plan and purpose that God has for us. Look here in verse 15, in verse 15 of Ephesians, he, the word of the Lord says to us, see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. How many say, think that we're living in some evil days? Come on, lift your hand. Hey, I mean, we, just when you think that something has been done that is just beyond anything you could imagine, something even more evil and sinister happens. And it's so much so that now it doesn't even shock us like it used to because the e days are that evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, what I'm getting ready to read is the will of God for us. Everybody say, this is the will of God. It goes on to say, and be not drunk with wine, whereas is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. First and foremost, the, the text tells us, don't use supernat a superficial things of this world to try to do what only God can do. Money can't do it. Alcohol, drugs, sex, fame, power, all of the stuff that this world tries to offer us, none of that can do what only God can do for you. Can I get an amen? amen. It might be good for a minute, and the pleasures of sin are pleasurable, the Bible says, for a season, but it won't be long before it leaves you empty and void, and only yielding to the Spirit can ultimately fulfill that which only God can do. How to, and then he says, well, okay, well, how do you do that? Read this for me, sweetheart. Speaking, speaking to you. Check. 
Now he's telling us how to be filled with the, the Spirit of God, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, which is the reverence of God. Expound on that. Yeah, I will expound. <laughs> just as um, Pastor just gave a definition of submission, I also have a, just a little bit to add to that because I use a different dictionary. I think um, the Webster 1828, which breaks down a lot of the words in the content of the Bible based on what God was saying in the Bible. Amen? So that word submit, um, to subordinate, to obey, to be under obedience, to put under, subdue unto, subject to, and in subjection to under. So you're not up here, you're under of the authority of someone. And we know in the word of God, when we submit ourselves to God, we're putting ourselves under the Lord Jesus Christ, and we become a person that is now under the command of him, doing what he tells us to do, not what we want to do. Because he said his ways are higher than our ways, and he knows everything, amen? Amen. Beforehand. So when we submit, we're yielding to our Father. And then you'll see when we submit to one another, we're yielding under another person, amen? amen. So, 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 then, so then the process of learning holy, everybody say holy submission. This, this is talking about a special type of submission. This is not just submitting to anything or anybody. This is the submission unto God, first and foremost, that then brings that person into alignment. Because one of the things, as I was studying this out, God says, submission is becoming one with the authority and the power that you are submitting to. You see, Jesus submitted unto the Father and became one with the Father so that he could reveal the Father to us. Amen? Because Jesus said, if you see me, for I and my Father are one. Submission, according to God, is becoming one with the one that you are submitting unto. So the only one that you should first and foremost submit yourself to is God. He's the only one deserving of your true submission because he's going to bring out himself to you, in you, and then through you. And that is the pure love of God. Everybody say God's love. God's love. This series is entitled Back to Your First Love. This is about getting back to God because God has been made to be so many different things today that people don't know who and what God really is. They don't know his character. He gets blamed for any and everything that he doesn't do. Glory to God. And this is about helping make sure that we understand who God truly is, how much he truly loves us, and when he requires or asks of us to submit to him, he's not trying to take anything away from us. He's not trying to hurt us. He's trying to bless us and give us the best life possible. Can I get three amens? Amen. 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 The only thing he asked of Adam, don't eat of one tree. One tree. Don't eat of one tree. And the devil was able to get Adam to go against God. How many times is he trying to get you and I 
in how many ways is he trying to get you and I to go against God and what are the consequences when we yield? So, um, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, and we talked about that, the reverence of God, and, and Pastor expounded on that. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husband. Stop right there. Now, so, can I just yeah, I want you to talk on that one. I want you to talk on that one big time. <laughs> I think it's going to be the rest of the ser sermon right here. <laughs> rest of the service. Well, as Pastor had expounded upon, we have to love God first Amen. and submit ourselves unto God. When you submit yourselves unto God, then you become what he has already called you in his likeness and in his image. You're acting like him. Amen? And so when you act like him, you're going to do what he did. And so he's now letting man know there's going to be order in the home, just like there's order in heaven. See, Jesus wasn't doing what he wanted to do. The Holy Spirit wasn't doing what he wanted to do. And we're not going to have time to go over each of those scriptures, but I'm going to take you through a few. Jesus did as he was commanded. He always said, I'm not here to do the, my will, but the will of my Father. And so God could trust him to know that he was not going to just do what he wanted to do on earth that he was listening for his voice and obeying his command. Amen. And so as Jesus did that, the Holy Spirit did it also, amen? amen. There was three, but they were all one. Yes. There was three, but they all were one. And we may not understand that in the natural, and that's why you have to have your spiritual ears on, amen? Because if he had order in heaven, he was establishing order in earth. So I want you to turn now to um, um, 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. And we're going to go to um, verse 3. I want to read it from the Amplified. You can get it. Okay. I want to start with verse 1 because, um, and I'll explain it. Pattern yourselves, this is Paul talking, pattern yourselves after me. Follow my example as I imitate and follow Christ. So you want to remember that verse first. Because we always get a lot of flack when, when I read verse 3. But you have to understand you're following as that person follows Christ. Amen? Verse 3, but I want you to know, I know I would get a lot of amens from the ladies. I'm not hearing too much from the men, but I'm, I'm on your side too. <laughs> and you'll see that as I go on. But I want you to know and realize that Christ is the head of every man. So how are Amen. we following that man, ladies? As he, number, verse 1, wow. as he imitates and follows Christ. Amen. 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 The head of a woman is her husband. All right. She didn't say, it didn't say just, see, God is specific. Every word in the word of God is significant. Yes. He said her husband, not other, uh, any other man out there that's talking to her and trying to tell her about her husband. <laughs> but now, and, wait a minute, just, just to reiterate, yeah. as that 
husband is following Christ. You see, the, the, the key is a husband following Christ so that the wife can follow the Christ-led husband. And that's where the problem has come because you've got too many men not following Christ, but they want that wife to follow them. Yeah, I probably didn't make that real clear, but that's exactly right. Amen. And the head of Christ is God. So he's also showing you here that the head of Christ is God. God already told Jesus, now you have paid the price. Anyone that cometh to me have to come through you. You can't even pray to the Father without praying in the name of Jesus. You know why? Because Jesus came down and he, he, he had to suffer. He had to die. He had to take everything in this earth that you could possibly go through. So he knows. And so when the Father is up there and he needs to, to do whatever he needs to do, he asks Jesus first because Jesus has that heart. I'm not saying God, God the Father does it. I'm not, don't take this out of context. But he's coming through Jesus because Jesus was the one that was obedient. Jesus was the one that paid the price to redeem man back to him. So when he comes to us or when he gives Jesus a command or the Holy Spirit a command, he wants to first hear from Jesus. What do you have to say? So now we go over to, and just these are just scriptures to establish that scripture about submission. Amen? Because I have noticed in my time as a grown woman, because I wasn't taught to be submissive. It was the word of God that taught me submission. Amen. And, but I had to yield myself. <laughs> I had to yield myself. So I'm not standing up here trying to give you a word that I haven't had to experience myself. Amen. And, you know, still experiencing. Amen. Because it's a process. It's a process. I'm not trying to stand up here and, oh, I'm all that now. I've been through a lot and still going through. And it is a process of being that submissive person, especially in a marriage, because if it wasn't modeled, now you have to go to the word of God, the God, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, who will teach you, that will bring all truth, and that will teach you how to do this. And what I have seen has women modeling themselves after the world and what other women are doing, and not from the word of God. Amen. Amen. And it will get you no place. Believe me. And I'll go into a little bit of my testimony, but I want to give you the word of God first. Because I want you to see that I'm not just saying this. This is what God has said. And you're under obligation not to take my word, but the word that God has given us. Amen? Amen. So now let's turn to Colossians 3.18. Out of the mouths of three or more witnesses, let every word be established. Colossians 3.18. Wives, be subject to your husbands. And I'm reading out of the Amplified. Subordinate and adapt yourselves to them as is right and fitting and your proper duty in the Lord. Are you doing this? For you? It's in the Lord. Amen? Amen. In the fear and the reverence of the Lord. Let me say this. Why pastor was talking about the submission unto God. When you submit yourself unto God and obey him. And in this love walk that we have, your trust becomes greater in him. Amen. Amen. So it's not so much the man you trust, it's the God over the man. Amen. Because you know 
that he loves you just that much that he's not going to allow anything to happen to you. And see, we've wavered from that because we started putting too much trust in the man and not in the God that's the head of the man. Amen. See, Amen. all of that has to be in order. Amen. And when we trust God, who is over that man, who is under the leadership and authority of Christ, then we can know that whatever decisions that are made of that man is for our Benefit. Well, it's for our benefit, amen? At least most of the time. <laughs> because it requires that man to, in his submission to God, yes. to also depend on God to affirm yes. in the heart of that woman that the decision that he's making is from God. And, some, and so sometimes we have to submit to a process of proving out the, the reality of the decision that we're making for the benefit of helping that woman to get to a place where they can become confident that the decisions that we are making are God-led, God-centered. Because men, we, we're, we're risk takers. We're risk takers. God made us that way because nothing ventured, nothing gained. No, no grit, no grind. No pain, no gain. You, all the men know all, the, all those little things that I'm talking about. But, but you, you can't be afraid to step out in faith and trust God in order to be able to see the plan and purpose and the glory of God in your life. And especially when you want the best for your wife, for your family, for your children, sometimes it requires you to take what might look like be a risk. And so the wife has to pray, God, help lead my husband into the plan, the purpose that you have for our lives. Now, what if I'm not married? No, I'm not going to lead the singles out. Then you have to pray, God help lead me. Amen? Amen? Because, because if, you know, one thing, as a single person, it's all on you. Where, where are my singles? And someone said, let me hear you say amen. amen. Look, you don't have anybody to influence your decision, but God. And you need to learn as an unmarried to hear the voice of God and be able to hear and direct your own life before you bring your life into com combination with somebody else's life. And now you have to bring that into agreement. It begins as an unmarried. This process that we're talking about of submission, th though we're talking about it in our covenant relationship, each one of us has a covenant with God, and we're responsible for, for developing our capacity to hear and obey and submit to God's will for our lives first. Oh, oh, because when you're single, you don't have anybody to blame. God, how come you let this happen to me? Were you listening to God? Were you following God? Did you even ask God? Did you ask God to come in after you had already started your stuff? Hey, God, would you bless my plan? Rather than, God, what is your plan for me so that I can be blessed by your plan? Because the Word of God says he, he has plans for each and every one of us before he knits us in, his, in our mother's womb. But how often do we go to God first? our first love, and get his guidance and his direction so that we're acting out his plan and purpose and not asking him to put his super on our natural plan. And the church said, so as we bring our learning as a single person, Adam, this is what I'm telling you. Now you pass this information on to your wife. Now, now, after you learn and understand how to obey me, not eat of this tree, you make sure that the person you bring into your life 
understand this is the game plan, this is the rules, this is the guidelines, this is what's going to bless us, and this is what's not going to bless us. I'm going back to teaching what is not being taught in the churches because we got so caught up into women's lib and all the rest of this stuff, and stuff is out of order, and that's why people's lives are jacked up. Single men, single women, married men, Marry women and all derivatives thereof. When we get back to what God's word says, Jesus said, get back to your first love, your first love. And whether you are married or not, he is calling you back to allowing him to be your partner, your spouse, your life coach, your confidant, your, your all in all, because that is what you want to bring into any other relationships, whether they're business relationships or family relationships or relationship relationships, friendships, whatever. You want to bring into those relationships a submission to God and a love that permeates out of that so that you can love people out of your first loving God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now let's turn to um, 1 Peter chapter 3, another scripture. In like manner, now we know we don't start a um, sentence in like manner unless you're going back to the scripture above. So really, it's all of chapter 2. and We don't have time to read that, but you need to read that so that you know what like manner we're talking about. And this was about Jesus and how he lived and how we are supposed to live. So he says, in like manner, you married men, women, be submissive to your own husbands, subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent on them, and adapt yourselves to them, so that even if any do not obey the word of God, they may be won over, not by discussion, but by the godly lives of their wives. Amen. Amen. And you know, I want to go back too, because you know, as Pastor said, you single women, as single women, it said husbands, not boyfriends. And I even see women, single women, listening to boyfriends and following their way when you know God's way. Just because he wants you to do a few things don't mean you do it. That's not your husband. Amen. He's specific. That's why I said God is specific in his work. He didn't say man. He said husband. And then he said your own husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, verse 2 when they observe in the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourselves together with your reverence for your husband you are to feel for him all the reverence includes the reverence includes to respect to defer to to revere him to honor to esteem appreciate, prize, and in the human sense, to adore him. That is, to admire, praise, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Hard for to read. <laughs> after, after 39 years, it's still, ooh, 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 ooh. You know, sometimes you can feel, I'm not qualified to get up there and preach because I'm not doing all these things. But you know, we have to hear it for ourselves too. The word, that's why I said it's a process over and over and over. My God, it, he had to go through all of this. Um, we got about 20 words here. Um, to adore him, that is to admire, praise, be devoted to, deeply love and enjoy your husband. Now, I got a few out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can assure you I'm not doing them all. But I'm going to get there, amen? amen? 
I'll be 64 this year, and, and you know, there's still a few more years. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the other thing is, see, you can do this when you know that that man is under the leadership and, and, and authority of Christ. Amen. So let me go. I was going we're gonna to stop, right? We're going we, we're going we're going to not stop, stop, but we, yeah. we're going to finish with them. And then next week. Because we had special things going on this week, we're going to start early, and we only, we're going to have, our pr- pr- short, have a little praise and worship, and then we're going to get right into this so we can have the full time to take our time, because this is so important. This is so important, folks. I, you need to tell everybody, everybody, everybody that, that's going through, young people! And old people, God is saying something. We're just coming out of a a 30-day fast. There is a word to be heard. Young people, youth, I need my youth in here. Mm -hmm. This is so important. Relationships are so dysfunctional. And by the time they get to me as the pastor, they're so broken and there's so much woundedness and so much hurt that, that it, it almost becomes irreparable to some, in some degrees because so much damage has been done. But, but I I'm going I'm to let you. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to let you. Testimony, okay. And I, I don't want, because um, I know we are. You, see, so you, time, you, you I put like that in I, the left hand. You're supposed to squeeze my hand. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Um, you know, I'm teasing. Pain in this arm. That's why I don't use it that much. But um, I want to, because I don't want to leave you, when we talked about those scriptures that I gave you, I have to let you know what my testimony is regarding that submission. And it was very hard for me to submit. Like I said, I wasn't brought up in a household of submission. So I really didn't know how to submit to a man because I was my own woman. I had to work very young in life and um, help in the provision in my household. And um, so when, and then we didn't start our lives off the right way, amen? We weren't in the word like we are today. I'm not making an excuse that I didn't know better and that I didn't know I was in sin. Because even a lot of us in here, even though we have been given the word for years and years, we're still doing some of those things we shouldn't be doing. And one of those things was fornication. We're gonna lay it right out and make it plain, amen? (laughs) And it hinders, you, you, you have to realize when God tells us not to do something, it's not because he don't want you to have fun and he don't want you all oh, to just experience life and all that it offers. He's protecting you because he already knows what this will cause even in marriage. Amen. We were in sin before we got married. And so, as a result of the things, you know, Pastor gets up and he said he was a wretch undone. Ooh. Well, I was a wretch undone too. <laughs> I, may be not, I may not have been doing everything he was doing, but I was doing some things. <laughs> Amen. And they weren't good or right, and I knew it was wrong, but I still did them. And so, as a result, we, we married. But I was holding a lot of things against him. And see, that happens in marriages when there is mistrust. The hardest thing to get back is trust. And men need to understand this because a woman is so different. Well, I can't say a man because a man, boy, a woman mess up, man. He's just... A woman can forgive and keep going, but I see men, they, they don't want to forgive so easily. But Amen. But that, that um, I was holding things that even, I, you know, I, I said, okay, he didn't do this while we were married, but I don't trust him. You know, he, you know how pastor is. He's just outgoing and... <laughs> 
You know, and women like him, you know, even to this day. I mean, I have to deal with stuff. You know. And I actually, I, you know, I get mad at him. You know, he can't, he can't help who he is and the way he is. And he can't help because a woman like him or, you know, whatever. But, you know, this is just real. I'm being real because I know women go through this kind of stuff. You know, charismatic and all of that. And so people are drawn to people like that. And so, you know, I had to deal with that and, I, you know, the trust. And even though I could trust him or, or should have been trusting him, I couldn't because of that. And it was because of the sin started before we got married. And so um, it took a while and it took prayer. And so that's why we're not sitting up here telling you something that we haven't experienced. We know he was praying for me and I was praying for him, even though I didn't know he was praying for me, because I was, you know, I was a shouter, I, you know, loud and everything, and I told him just what I felt when I felt, felt, felt like telling him, and you know, it was just things that weren't good. And um, I had to then get in prayer and ask the Lord to help me. I stopped praying for God to deal with him, I start praying because you can't change anyone. Amen. The only person Amen. you can change is you. Amen. And when I started praying and asking God to change me, and he was praying and asking God to change him, we came as one, Amen. and things start working better. Amen. Because the hardest thing, and when you don't trust even when God is telling you something, you don't want to obey. He was telling me to, to leave my job. Now, let me preface, preface that with ladies. I'm not telling you to leave your job and all of that. I'm telling you what he told me to do because he knew the calling on my husband's life. And I wouldn't do it because, you know, I can't trust, you know, I got to make, I got to be, I have to help support my family. See, I wasn't taking my money, spending it on me. My money was going toward bills and, and the household. So it wasn't a selfish thing. It was that my mentality, I have to help provide. And so when I finally, when we were both praying for ourselves, then God started speaking to me where I was listening and then obeying, amen, because obedience is critical. Not half obedience. Half obedience is like not doing it at all. You have to completely obey God, not half step. And so when he did that, then I was able to go to him and I said, okay, Lord, I said, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to let my job go and, and become the mother and wife and everything I needed to be in the home. Well, guess what? I didn't even quit my job before God started moving in my husband's life. Because you see, we can prevent things as a woman of God, as a help me, as an assistant to our husbands, from things happening in their life because we're one. Just like they can prevent things from happening in our life because we're one. So when I did that, God started moving in his life he got called into the ministry. But guess what I had to also see? I had to see that he was serious about the word of God. I had to see him in this word. I had to see him doing what he, you see what I'm saying? Because you, if you don't see your husband studying, and you don't see him praying, and you don't see him trying to do something with the Lord, you're not going to believe, wait a minute, don't tell me anything. Don't tell me what to do when you're not doing something. You're the head, you're the leader. I mean, I wasn't saying that to him, but that was the word of God. He was the head of that household. So he had to be showing me something. He had to be showing that household something. Because I'm telling you, when you as men start living up to the role that God has given you and stop milly-mouthing, and all that other stuff. 
into ministry. But guess what? Then there were some things that had to be done I wasn't all the way in agreement with. Each step we took, I wasn't always in agreement with it. But guess what? This man did. Because he started taking his role seriously in the Lord. He said, Raphaela, whether you come with me or not, I'm going to do what God told me to do. He did not say, well, baby, that, well, you, uh, 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 you know, you don't want me to do that, or, you know, whatever, well, we won't do it. Is that leadership? No. And sometimes you're going to have to suffer men a little bit, because he had to suffer <laughs> you know, a little bit and a lot. My husband has taken a whole lot off of me, believe me. Because I don't hold my mouth a lot of times. <laughs> and guess what? God lined me up. He lined me up because he knew my heart was, but wait a minute, now you're talking about this, that. I can't quit my job. But wait a minute, let me think this back over again. And How are we going to make it? You know, reasoning and rationalizing. That's what we end up doing when God gives us a command. We reason and rationalize, then we end up not doing what he tells us to do. So I'm going to shorten it and we'll finish next week. But the ultimate goal, when he did that, because I, I would have to tell that whole story. You know, our son went on to be with the Lord. We were believing for another son. He had had a vasectomy. Um, so, there, you know, that wasn't going to happen. And how God, you've heard a lot of that story, how God did that reverse of vasectomy. They said maybe it's a little bit, a few percentage chance. We had to trust God. And God brought us our two sons. But it was out of obedience. And some things we don't receive because we're not obeying the word of God. Because we don't feel like it. Or we don't want to. Or we don't forgive. You have to be living in forgiveness. If that man has done something to you that have hurt you deeply, you have to forgive. And God will show you how to forgive. Because he had to show me there was unforgiveness in my heart, not only towards some other situations, but against my own husband. That, that had happened in the past, but I was still rehearsing those things. And that's why we got to let stuff go. Ask God, show me how to forgive. And he will take you to the word. Because that's what he does. Because his word is true. And his word will not return void. Take you to the word and show you what you have to do to forgive. So that you can now be in his blessing. And you'll have your, your prayers answered of him. Because some prayers are not being answered. And we're wondering why and why, Lord, I've been praying, I'm believing, I'm, I'm operating in faith. But you've got the other things out of order, the love out of order. His love is agape love, unconditional. No matter what, how somebody's treating you, you love them anyway. And you ask God to show me that kind of love. How do I love him? And if you got to fake it till you make it, then you fake it till you make it. Amen? <laughs> and I'll continue on this. But I have to say that much to let you know that this submission thing works. But he was also, he didn't make me do anything. He trusted God, the God of Raphaela, like I trusted the God of Henry. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify you. 
And I, I, I promise you, there is so much more to be said. That's why we're going to, I promise you next week, we're going to get into this because God has so much he wants to say to you. And he's allowing us to use our testimony and our journey to help you to gain some, just some revelations and some truths that's going to just bless your life. Father, we just thank you for the power of your word now. And we just thank you, Father God, that we release a word of agreement with every person that, Father, you know exactly what we need. You know why we need it. You know how to get it to us as we submit to you, as we let go, as we say, Father, we can't do it in our own strength, in our own power, in our own might. Fix what's hurting. Fix what's broken. Heal what is wounded. Deliver what needs to be broken so that we can be all that you desire for us to be in every relationship, beginning with our love first for you. And so, Father, we thank you. I want everyone in here to join me. If you love Jesus, if you want to love Jesus, if you want that personal relationship with him, I want you to make this declaration of your faith along with us by asking him and receiving him. It never hurts to do it. I've done it thousands of times over the, my journey and every time I do it, it just strengthens my conviction that I belong to Jesus. I'm a child of God. So would you say this with me? Say, dear God, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died for me on a cross at Calvary, bearing my sin with its nature in his death. But he rose on the third day with newness of life for me so that I could be born again. Thank you, Jesus. I have everlasting life in you. I do live move and have my being. Heavenly Father, I can never thank you enough. I can never praise you enough for your grace that saved my soul. So I live my life in dedication to you that others may come to know you as I do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. We, we just want to say how much we love you, how special you are to each and every one of us. And God knows where we're broken, and he knows how to heal us. Let go. Let God. Just let go. Turn it over to him. Young people, oh, how God loves you. How he loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for you, young people. He knows where you've been hurt, wounded. Where He knows about bullying and, and, and all of the peer pressure that you're going through. And he says, let go and let me. Don't wait till, I, I'm going to wait till I get grown. No. He wants to be your partner in love right now. Right now, because the enemy is after you right now. He's not waiting till you get grown to attack you. He's trying to take you out right now. He's trying to get you into depression and woundedness and isolate you and make you feel like nobody likes you, you don't belong, you're not cool, you're not hip and all that stuff. Don't let the devil lie to you and steal what God has for you right now. He wants to use you to be a trophy of his grace, young people. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you. Father, we just thank you.